I'm now joined by Calvin Dark, who is the principal and co-founder of RC Communications, a branding and media relations firm based here in Washington, D.C. Mr. Dark, welcome to our show. Um, we don't often see public protests like this in Algeria, um, do we? And on such a large scale. Um, no, we haven't actually um, for a long time. And I think that the the courage of the protesters to participate in this public display of protest says a lot about how serious things are. Because just for a bit of historical context, Abdelaziz Bouteflika is credited with bringing the Algerian civil war to an end and bringing a relative amount of stability to the country. And um, economic prosperity because, you know, an oil producing country. So before protests had been muted partly because of government oppression, but then also partly because the citizens didn't want to upset the apple cart. So what do you think are the main things the young people, the young protesters are protesting against? What do they want? Well, I think their main um, ask is that it is very clear that President Bouteflika, if he even realizes that he's president, is extremely ill, he's extremely old, and to bring Algeria to 2019, it, they need someone who's not in a debilitated state that he is. But it also, I want to make a point, with most of the country younger than I am, you know, in their um, early 30s, they want to make sure that things in Algeria improve, but that also Algeria takes the place that it could have on the world stage. An example of that is in North Africa, the Maghreb region, there is a surprisingly low level of cooperation politically and economically, simply because of Algeria being stuck in the Cold War. Like the Western Sahara conflict, Morocco has been trying to propose a, con a compromise um, solution to it, but because of the regime in Algeria, they haven't been open to compromise. So I think the young people are looking to move Algeria forward. Well, now, what do you think are the prospects of the upcoming presidential election? Do you think the current president, as old uh, as uh, however long has been in power, Will he be seriously challenged this time around? Well, I think he will be seriously challenged, but I don't think that if he does make it um, to the elections that the elections will be free and fair. Keep in mind, you know, there are conflicting reports about what he's doing in Switzerland right now for a health check, or is it something more serious? And I think most people in Algeria realize that even if it wasn't Bouteflika, the country has been run for a while by a group of elites and military leaders, um, namely his brother Said um, Bouteflika. And so if elections are free and fair, he would have a challenge. But that's a long way down the road, even though it's just in April. Well, now, Calvin, let's go back a little bit and talk about the Arab Spring. If you look at Algeria's neighbors, uh, there were changes of regimes after the Arab Spring in Egypt and in Libya, but not in Algeria necessarily. Do you think strongman politics served Algeria better than a regime change would? I don't necessarily think it served it better, but what I do believe is that what Algerians saw was that Bouteflika and those around him were able to provide a relative level of stability. And when oil prices were higher, um, a more comfortable level of economic security. But I think people are realizing now that that's, not, that, that that's not the case anymore. And on the issue of the Arab Spring, we have to remember that this started with popular protest um, in Tunisia, and that's right next door to Algeria. And if you look at the scores of people protesting out in Algeria, this could be the next chapter of an Arab Spring. Calvin Dark, co-founder and principal of RC Communications, thank you for coming in. Thank you.